Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I am a professor at Texas A&M University. And today we're going to talk about the cardiovascular system. In this first uh, presentation, we'll talk about the needs of multicellular animal organisms, um, the cardiovascular parts and the functions, and the layers of the vascular wall, including the heart. So we'll talk about the heart as well as some vessels and the need for the cardiovascular system. Now, multicellular animals, which is what these guys are, require three mechanisms. One is to distribute oxygen, nutrients, and hormones. Two, to collect waste. And three, to transport that waste to excretory organs. That's three things that's required. And that's done by the cardiovascular system. Here we see Adam's cardiovascular system of the heart in a series of vessels. Actually, we got the heart as a muscular pump, and then two closed sets of vessels. One goes to the lung to get oxygen and distri distribute carbon dioxide, and the other one goes to the rest of the body, as you see. Two closed sets of vessels uh, continuous only at the heart. Now, if you look at these different uh, vessels, you've got the aorta, arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, uh, and the vena cava veins. Uh, and here you can see the pressure. And so coming from the heart, you have the pressure and it's expanding the pulse. There's pulse in there uh, all the way until you get to arterioles. Arterioles prevent subsequent pulse. The blood flows, but it doesn't pulse anymore at the arterioles. Arterioles is a sort of uh, peripheral resistance. Uh, in the capillaries, you can see the greatest surface area is in the capillaries. So the capillaries throughout the body um, in the connective tissue uh, carrying nutrients and collecting waste uh, from them. You can see the pressure is high here. It's going down. We can take the pulse in our arm because the, the, there is a pulse in our arteries um, and in arterioles in the beginning. And then when you get back to the vena cava, it can actually be negative. So we would expect to find uh, in these vessels various structural components that facilitates uh, withstanding the mechanical stress. So if you coming from the heart, you have a lot of mechanical uh, stress, so you expect to see a lot of elasticity, a lot of elastic arteries, and, and the muscle. The smooth muscle does not cause movement of blood. It restricts the flow. It closes a caliber on the uh, on the blood vessel is what it is what it does and so you have a more smooth muscle and elastic uh, tissue uh, with mechanical stress as you have less mechanical stress you lose your elastic tissue get less and less and the uh, smooth muscle layers get less uh, in the arterioles right before you get to the capillaries no smooth muscle in the wall of the capillaries and that makes it thin for the metabolic uh, needs. You also have venules coming back and then veins and actually the larger veins you can pick up some elastic tissue. So what's in the wall is thick muscle here, a little bit of muscle uh, in, the, in the venous return because there's a little stress that is overcoming. So blood vessels are adapted for mechanical stress and also metabolic needs. And here we can see coming from the heart uh, you have a certain amount of pressure, about 120 millimeters of mercury coming from the, from the heart, going into the aorta, the elastic artery, and it expands. And then when the heart uh, is no longer contracting uh, during um, um, uh, d distally, then uh, the elastic arteries maintain the pressure whenever the heart is not uh, uh, pushing, uh, pushing out. So it maintains pressure in between heartbeats. That's what elastic arteries does. And then we have muscular arteries, and that's to distribute blood and maintain pressure. And you can see one of those elastic arteries with a, a lot of muscle in between there. That's a muscular artery, I should say, muscular. And then uh, we have arterioles, and that's the one that sets up the peripheral resistance. That's like the oil filter in your car that uh, allows you to have pressure uh, in, your, in your oil. Um, and so uh, it's the one that eliminates the pulse uh, for subsequent uh, blood vessels that goes down through there. Distributes blood, 
you see arterial or lavino there. And then for gases exchange and nutrients exchange and waste exchange, we have the capillaries. See a longitudinal view uh, and a cross section. These are endothelial cells lining those. And then we have venules. Venules at the get the uh, arterioles, capillaries, and venules. And the venules is a source of edema. That's where fluid leaks out uh, when you have a bee sting or, or some fluid. And then there's different types of, of capillaries that we'll see. But here we can see the, uh, the, 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 the venous part and the arterial part uh, and what's in the wall. Uh, either All of them have blood vessels uh, that uh, nourish the blood vessels themselves and we call them vasovasorum. Vasovasorum, they have nerves too. That causes a contraction of the smooth muscle. So there's a large vein and a muscular artery where you have a lot of smooth muscle uh, in the wall of the muscular artery. Uh, and we'll study the capillaries in a minute. There are basically three layers in the wall. Uh, the closest layer to the blood is the intima, tunica intima. And that's the endothelial cell. You always have endothelial cells lining all blood vessels and lymphatic vessels. Sometimes in the, uh, you can have uh, connective tissue too. And then you have the internal elastic lamina, which is a light thing that we see going through there. So all that is intima. After that, you get the smooth muscle layer from here uh, to here. That's a media, tunica media, smooth muscle and elastic. You can have elastic lamina in there, elastic fibers in there, uh, in the case of elastic arteries. Uh, and then you have the advent tissue. Advent tissue is important because it glues down the vessel. So whenever the vessel is pulsing or blood's going through, the vessel isn't moving. Advent tissue uh, is the connective tissue that holds it down. Also, there can be blood vessels in uh, that uh, advent tissue that uh, provide nourishment for uh, the blood vessel, and that's known as a vasovasorum. So if we here we see a muscular artery, several layers of smooth muscle, interelastic lamina, so there would be intima, media, and then the advent tissue on the outside. Here we see a, a vein, and you have uh, the media is small, but you do have a media, and the advent tissue actually have a longitudinal disposed uh, smooth muscle bundles. So you can see them here, and also see them here. So this is the the intima is up there, a small media, and then the advent tissue is where you have longitudinal disposed smooth muscle uh, in these veins. Also in the veins, you can have valves. And you can see valves here, which are covered by endothelial cells, connective tissue covered by endothelial cells, uh, and it, it will trap the blood. And you have that in the veins, but not in the arteries. So uh, endothelial cells are flattened cells. If you look at them on the side, you look thin. But if you look at them on face, perpendicular to this view, if you look at here on face, you see that it's more like a pancake uh, in that it's flat on one side, but it's bigger around uh, on the other side. And the pink we see here is really the cytoplasm of the endothelial cell. That's what you see right there, and we can see it all around uh, these, two, these two cells. Uh, the in the cart of the heart is the one that is the organ that produces the pressure, uh, and you have the endocardium, uh, so that's what's on the inside, which is like the intima, uh, and it's connective tissue and the endothelial cells. You can see it right in through there. Then the myocardium is a muscle, and the epicardium is on the outside. So this is endocardium, and you have the endothelial cell. You can see a little bit of cytoplasm there, connective tissue there. Uh, that it composes a connective tissue uh, in through their sub-endothelial connective tissue. They call it an endothelium. And here we can see uh, cardiac cells. Cardiac cells are branch cells, one or two nuclei per cell, and the nucleus is more in the middle. Uh, and also the cells are attached to one another with these intercalated discs. So we in striated muscle, you have the striation, which is where the sarcoma area is, a contracting unit of it. But also, we have where one cell attaches to another cell, as you see here and there and there. 
uh, and that is the intercalated disk. So this is the intercalated disk uh, that we see in there. And here we can see it's actually macular ad adherence, um, and is um, uh, it's also uh, desmosome and fascial adherence type uh, junctions that we that have there. And then outside the heart, you have the epicardium, the outside. And it has a lot of fat associated with it, and it's above uh, the myocardium. So you can see the fat, and then there's also vasopressorum in there as well. Now coming down uh, through between the ventricles uh, of the heart uh, are the Purkinje fibers. The Purkinje fibers are modified smooth uh, uh, skeletal, uh, sorry, cardiac muscle cells, modified cardiac muscle cells uh, that carries electrical impulse down uh, to the tip of the ventricles and then back up the sides uh, for the ventricles, uh, both right and left, uh, to contract at the same time. So the Purkinje fibers are coming from uh, uh, the SA node, uh, which uh, will uh, try to will, will organize uh, the contraction of the heart. And you can see one of these cells, there's a nucleus there, it's a big cell, has a lot of glycogen in it, which has been removed. That was, that's what makes it more light. Also, in the endocardium, you have the endothelial cells, of course, lining here. But also, we have the valves. And you can see where the myocardium, through connective tissue, uh, is attached to the valves. The valves are connective tissue uh, with endothelial cells lining. So the blood always touches endothelial uh, in the theory cell, myocardium, myocardium, you can see where the connective tissue comes in. And here's a higher mag, this showing you uh, the endo, endocardium in through there, which is the endothelial cells, sub endothelial connective tissue, and then how that connective tissue attaches to the, uh, to the myocardium. You can see the endothelial cell here, uh, very, uh, very nice. We want to thank the original sources of the images and, and pictures that were used uh, from various books uh, to illustrate uh, the functions and characteristics of skin. The, so this is the end of the cardiovascular system in terms of the needs of multicellular animals, uh, the uh, cardiovascular parts and their functions, and the layers of the vascular wall, what's in the wall including the heart.